to the parasite system. So that is a system that we ultimately want to live by, not by sustain, sustaining and helping the parasite banks. So in the interim, if as a necessity, and it looks like it is a necessity, that the type of bank account that we'll be looking at is just a standard non-interest bearing account, and that the material that is required is merely the EIN and a simple certificate of the trust and corporation rather than the trust deed itself. So it's a, it's a certificate of title, if you like. Then we will provide that document and we will be refining the notes that are listed in the ecclesiastical deed so that people know how to simply go to a bank and say, let me open up a non standard non-interest-bearing account for a trust and just get, get done with it and be done with it and have an account. And while it means that the bank can take the money whenever it wants to, at least you've got something open in the interim until you can migrate to the banking system of Ucadia, which will be all the societies run by the societies, run by you for your benefit. So I know that's a long answer, but that's where we're heading. So uh, if you read stuff on the banking at the moment, just know that that is being updated certainly over the next week as well. All right? Great. Thank you, Frank. Let me go to the phones real quick with Ron. See if we can get Ron unmuted. Ron? Hi, Frank. This is Ron. Hi, Ron. Hey, how you doing? Hey, on, Hi, using, uh, on using the Ritz, who, who, uh, who, as far as the officials, who gets the, the Ritz? Just one, two, three? Do we notice people, other people, other than the main people? Or, um, or are you going to outline this later? Okay. There's, there's two, <clears throat> there's going to be two updates on the home page of the website. It says liens and it says dishonor. So those are going to be changed to writs and confessions. So the short answer is that the, uh, when you send a great writ, you send it to the superior of the officers that are in dishonor. So if you're dealing with, for example, a county court and they're in dishonor, you'd send it to the state U.S. Attorney General. That would be the writ then you notice the next two levels because you must honour their chain of command. You cannot usurp their chain of command. If you send writs out like confetti, you have all already automatically put yourself in dishonour because you're not giving them the very thing that we are claiming they're not giving us, which is their opportunity to remedy. Only one official at one time and one matter should ever be placed under a writ, and that is only when there is no diplomatic relations. So as I say, if it's a county judge, a district judge that's dishonoured you, or a registrar of the state, then the first would be, for exa this example, the attorney general, then the governor, then the president. Yeah, That would be the order. If, if it's at a federal level, it would be the US attorney general, the president, and the queen. Uh, if, it's, if it's the U.S. Attorney General that's dishonoured, it would be the U.S. Attorney General uh, the, the, uh, or, or say the President's office did it, it would be the President, the Queen and the Pope. Do not send everybody a writ. Do not send a writ to a Pope unless a President or some senior official has failed to honour because all you're doing is you're denying them the opportunity to make remedy. What we do send those higher levels, and only two above, is a notice of the writ and a copy of the writ. And what the notice is, is simply to give them notice that a writ's being issued, here is the copy, um, and, and that's all we give them, is basically a full copy and the notice on the front. They know exactly what it is. Does that answer your question, Ron? It does. Um Frank, are you going to put an outline on the website later on? Yes. Okay, good. And I'm trying to do that in this next week. For you, I know you've got a pressing issue, so as you know, I'm working with you to get that done straight away, and that's going to help me in getting this for everybody. So I think it's a win-win. Um, but uh, certainly over the next week, there will be a detailed section-by-section, writ-by-writ 
instruction on how to use it, how to send it, all the elements that go with it, um, and the criteria. Because I want everyone to have the tools. And I know that you know 99.999% of people who are ever on these calls or listen to these calls want to do the right thing. That's correct. Now, in my case, should I do a mandamus or the recitio? I guess. Uh, we'll have to talk about that offline. I'm not quite sure. I haven't thought that through yet. Okay. okay. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Back to some questions from the chat. Uh, am I correct in thinking that the grantor and trustee is the man and that the beneficiary is the person. This is uh, from the chat, chat uh, box earlier. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about the true trust, um, this, this is how it works. You have a divine trust, which is a purely spiritual trust. It's the first and only time that a purely spiritual trust has been defined, but it's incredibly important because what we're doing is we're clarifying what was described for a long, long time without contradicting scripture, but ensuring that the parasites can't corrupt because they are using their, their tricks to steal. So there's a divine trust and a true trust, and this is how it works. The, the divine creator chooses to be instanced into a unique collective awareness into a unique being separate to but part of the collective so a, a new trust is formed and into that trust is placed a piece of the divine and that is a divine trust and that is then administered by officers for the divine so it is an aspect of the divine in the trust it is administered by the divine and it is purely spiritual, and no flesh being can ever touch it. And when the trust is created, a divine person, a divine personality is created. And if you want to give it a name that you're probably familiar with, you can call it a soul. Okay? But we've now described in terms of law and trust law, a physical, although it's spiritual, but a, a, a physical description of it. Now then, the grantor of a flesh is that the divinity, the divine person, uh, wishes to come into life, to experience life in the form of flesh, in this universal dream. And so it is the grantor being the divine person that then uh, creates the, the unique uh, flesh. So the flesh comes out of the collective dream and is breathed life and only has life when the divine person is present. So then the flesh is the trustee, the grantor is the divine person, and the beneficiary then is the true person of the flesh. So that is the relationship, and it is defined in canon law. Um, if you go and have a look at that, you'll find that it's quite well defined. I know these are difficult concepts to, to get your head around, but I do believe that they are entirely, I 100% agree, they are entirely consistent with all ancient scripture. We've merely defined it so that these pirates and these parasites can't keep squirreling around and making their outrageous claims. Okay? Yes, uh, very good, Frank. Uh, is there a way... Uh, to connect with others in Acadia from our own areas, cities, and towns? Not yet. But, but I, I, again, I, I, the writs to me, the great writs are an important priority, but the biggest priority is the perfection of the deeds of trust that go from the uh, global union to the regional unions, from the regional unions to the national free societies, from the national free societies to the states, and in those states being available as both deeds and charters and instructions for groups to form themselves. I, I, the, the forum is one way for members to come together. That is university.ukadia.info. 
But even though it's supposed to be open, there will always be personality conflicts. So some people may not want to be part of that. Some people may have, have suffered being kicked off that. The idea is that, that collectively at a grassroots level, groups will come together and find ways to communicate themselves. Now, those that are registered, a request will be made as these deeds are ready, if you permit others in your area to receive your email so that you can all contact. But beyond that, and if people say yes, then, then obviously we'll, we'll share that information out and then it's up to the groups to start doing it. But that is the goal and it's not to create a platform that is centrally managed because anything centrally managed can be taken over. It can be corrupted and of course it can create the kind of tensions that people may feel where they say well you're saying this is all grassroots but really there's a handful of people that are running it no it is about grassroots so that's a long answer but hopefully i kind of answered the question and what's coming as well okay yeah very good frank thank you for that and uh next another question from the chat and then we'll go back to the phone line um, if the Office of Executor is superior to the Office of Trustee, why not claim to be the Executor? I'm glad this question gets asked because it, it, it is something, look, everyone's learning and there are a lot of people who are contributing out there to our learning. And I know that I've got to be careful that when we come across new information that we don't bring it across as, as almost fanatical. The problem of the executor, and I feel that there's been a lot of damage, unfortunately, done through this, this issue of executor because of the way it was sold rather than the ideas. There was a lot of good information in it, is that there are two types of testamentary trusts we're dealing with. There's what I call a natural testamentary trust, that is one that's formed by natural people, natural men and women, where the office of executor in the formation of that trust is in fact the most powerful position absolutely and judges and other people would, would understand that but when we're talking about SESTA KV trusts we're talking about artificially produced trusts we're talking about trusts that are created by statute not by men and women there is no man or woman that sits in an office saying today I'm creating 50 SESTA KV trusts. If there was, then of course the role of executor would be superior. But it is the statute, it is the law, it is the automated system, it is the beast that is the executor of SESTA KV trusts. And you cannot get into that role. You can't get in. It, it, is, it is illogical by its design. It is designed... SESTA KV trusts are designed to eliminate the executor. So what's been happening, unfortunately, is that in the seeming comp competition between information, what I've been trying to explain over and over and over again, that the executor role only applies to natural testamentary trusts and not to SESTA KV that have been deliberately designed so that there is no role superior than the trustee is that it's created still a confusion in people's minds. So I hope I've cleared that up. Uh, it's still a confusing uh, subject, you know, as to uh, then why the why is the governor of uh, of each state a part of their description in their title as executor and administrator? Because uh, their state is still a sister KV and the trustees are hidden. Yes. So you right. think the governor is the highest role in the state? No. No. They're just an administrator. Right. So they hide the trustees. And you've got to remember, the system wants us to believe. Now, I will say one thing. No one should feel bad and no one should feel that, I, uh, that I'm in any way casting aspersions if someone doesn't get this right. The system wants you to believe 
that we're just dealing with the same thing of executor being higher than the trustee.